Hi, my name is Madeline Snipes. I'm a second year medical student at the Medical College of Georgia in Augusta, Georgia. And today I'm going to be presenting a case report on a patient with synchronous primary cancers of the penis and bladder. So our patient is a 58 year old with a history of low grade non-invasive papillary urothelial carcinoma he is status post TURBT on December 27th of 2017 and again on January 24th of 2018. He presents to our clinic in February of 2018 for evaluation of a chronic penile lesion, which he thinks is the result of being poked by a stick while having sex in the woods. A penile biopsy done at the time of his TURBT in January, confirmed invasive squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. A circumcision, partial penectomy, and repeat cystoscopy were planned. However, this patient was unfortunately lost to follow-up due to a reported lack of insurance. <clears throat> he presented to our clinic again this year, um, 2022 in February, and he reported inability to retract his foreskin, pain and bleeding with manipulation of his penis, as well as spraying with urination and a new mass in his scrotum. Physical exam revealed a hard lesion that was destructive to the entire distal penis with bloody discharge noted. We were unable to retract the foreskin. We noticed a one centimeter mass in the left side of the scrotum. And we also noticed bilateral hard inguinal, inguinal um, masses. The patient consented for circumcision, excision of the scrotal mass and cystoscopy. Additionally, cephalexin was prescribed just to see if it would do anything for his lymphadenopathy. So just a quick overview of penile cancer. It's most common in 50 to 70 year olds with the major risk factors being phimosis, HPV, smoking, obesity, and HIV. Penile cancer is staged with the TNM staging system based on depth of tumor invasion, lymph node involvement, and metastatic disease. Here is just a visual depiction of the T classification. So T1 is when tumor invades the subepithelial connective tissue. T2 is tumor in the corpus cavernosum. T3 is tumor in the corpus spongiosum. And T4 is when there's tumor in any other adjacent structures. So at this point, with his history of spraying with urination, as well as the bilateral inguinal lymphadenopathy, this patient has a preliminary staging of T3N2. Inguinal nodes are palpable at presentation a decent percentage of the time, and unfortunately disease is already metastatic in 47 to 85% of cases at presentation. This image just depicts the typical route of metastasis for penile cancer. So first it goes to the inguinal lymph nodes and then to the pelvic lymph nodes. So bladder cancer has a mean age of diagnosis of 75 years old with the primary risk factor being smoking. That's the major one. Other risk factors, however, are male sex, older age, Exposure to chemicals such as aromatic amines, hairspray, paint, petroleum, and even red meat, as well as chronic infection or irritation such as with the use of indwelling catheters or chronic kidney stones. Bladder cancer is also staged with the TNM staging system. And here is a visual depiction of the T staging with T1 involving connective tissue beneath the surface urothelium. 
T2, where tumor invades the detrusor muscle. T3, where tumor invades perivesical fat. And T4, where tumor invades any surrounding structures outside of the perivesical fat. So in February, after our patient presented to clinic, he got a CT scan without contrast. And this scan demonstrated numerous tumors occupying the majority of the bladder, as well as bilateral hydronephrosis of both kidneys. Um, and here you can see the axial cut demonstrating numerous bladder tumors, and um, as well as you can see the hydronephrosis of the right kidney in this image to the right. And this um, axial image just depicts the bilateral inguinal lymphadenopathy with um, pathologically enlarged enhancing lymph nodes. So unfortunately, there is no established guidance for the treatment of multiple primary cancers. I was only able to find one or two other case reports of a patient with synchronous primary cancers of the bladder and penis. And people with multiple primary cancers are almost always excluded from clinical trials. So the challenge is to find an anti-cancer therapy strategy that covers both cancer types without increasing toxicity. Um, so for his penis, we would recommend a partial penectomy as well as consideration for radiation and chemotherapy. And for his bladder, he needs another TURBT and we would consider radical cystectomy with neoadjuvant chemotherapy versus bladder conservation therapy, which would involve TURBT plus chemo and radiation. This is just an example of the a glandectomy with grafting done with skin from the medial thigh. Our patient presented for surgery on February 18th. Unfortunately, the penile tumor could not be resected without removing the entire glands, but the patient did not provide consent for this procedure. So tumor was dissected until the meatus was encountered, and then a ventral meatoplasty was, due, was done due to his stenotic meatus. <clears throat> and cystoscopy revealed tumor occupying pretty much the entire bladder, so the decision was made to postpone TURBT due to his very fragile epithelium at his meatus. Um, so we are going to bring him back in a week for TURBT. The pathology report of the penile lesion confirmed invasive squamous cell carcinoma of the penis. It is HPV associated, moderately differentiated. Tumor was unfortunately present at the resection margins and there was lymphovascular and perineural invasion present. So if this patient will provide consent, next steps in future management include repeat TURBT, which was done on February 25th and he ended up receiving continuous bladder irrigation after that procedure, um, and approximately 80% of the tumor was able to be resected at that time. So next steps would also include considering radical cystectomy with neoadjuvant chemotherapy versus bladder conservation therapy, which would include TURBT and chemo and radiation. Additionally, this patient really needs a partial penectomy to remove the remaining tumor. We should give consideration to inguinal and or pelvic lymph node dissection, which is something that would normally be done in this patient, but it's complicated due to his synchronous cancers of his bladder and penis. This is a discussion that needs to be had. 
and we'll consider chemotherapy for his invasive squamous cell carcinoma of the penis, and a typical regimen includes paclitaxel, iphosphamide, and cisplatin. So that's our case. Thank you so much for listening. And here are my references.